More and more people are trying to run Plex Media Server today because of the cost of the subscriptions. Now in the past I tried running it on a Synology device and then I tried running it on an Unray server made by me. Now, the problem with this one is that it's not easy to use, you know, you need a little bit of nudging and set up and stuff like that. So in today's video I'm going to try it using Windows because with Windows it's, you know, straightforward. You know, you just install it and that's it. So I'm going to tell you my experience of how I'm running Plex Media Server on Windows and the benefits of running a Windows machine. So stay tuned. Now how you can see I'm running a macOS device. That is because this is my MacBook and I'm not going to control the Windows machine with a keyboard and mouse. No, I'm going to control it with another device. So in this scenario it's going to be a Mac but you can control it with any device. Doesn't matter if it's an iPhone, Android, Windows device, macOS device, etc. So, and I'm going to show you guys how to control it outside of your network as well, because normally this one stays inside of your network, so the moment you leave the house, you won't be able to control it anymore. But there's a super easy way so you can control it outside of your network, and it's super secure, so I'm going to show you guys every single thing. So let's start with the basic. The first thing that you will need is this Windows app. For the Mac OS, you can find it on the App Store. So all you have to do is just you open it, and then you will have, how you can see, I have it here. Now in your scenario, all you have to do is just go to add a PC. Now instead of add a PC here, normally it says that you can put the name that you give to your computer. In my scenario, my name is PCN. The problem is that, that it doesn't work, so I will recommend putting the IP address. Once you put the IP address, just go to add a credential here, and here you just put the name, so whatever name you have to your PC, for example PCN for me, and then the password what you have, and just click add. And then just add it again, and that's it, you will end up with this one. Then you just double click on it, you put the password that you have, and voila, everything works like magic. Now, to give you an idea, this computer is not the best one, but it's not the worst one, you know? So I, I paid 60 British pounds for this computer, just to let you know, and I got an i3 7 generation, eight gigabytes of RAM, but the, the graphic cards, you won't be able to see it here. It's an Intel, you know, built-in HD graphic cards from Intel. You won't be able to see it here because it says Microsoft Remote Display, because I'm using it remotely. Now, the performance using Windows like this, it's actually pretty good. For example, if I go to my YouTube channel, right, I can literally see a YouTube video like I was running this computer in, you know, in front of me, not remotely, not stuff, it's just plugged in. You know, everything works perfectly. I click, it works. I click, it works. Now, this is the video because, you know, let's click on the other video, let's click on swell. Now, you can see, the video works perfectly. You can watch a full screen. You can do whatever you want. It works like a normal Windows machine, you know. The idea with this one is why run a Windows virtual machine rather than, you know, Unray server and just install Windows because it's much easier to set up the graphics and everything. So for example, if I click google.com here, let's say I need the graphics, right? All I have to do is just Intel auto detect, right? Let's say I'm not an expert. I don't know how to install the graphics. Here, I will literally just download Intel Auto Detect Drivers, Auto Detect Driver. And here it is, Intel Support. And uh, I just downloaded it. How you can see, I have it already downloaded here. And I have an update to, to update my drivers for the processing graphic cards. But how you can see, everything it just works. While the Unray server, you have, you know, a lot of things to do. To You will be able to install Windows, but it won't have full control and it will run really bad. And then you have to give it access. You don't know what to do. You're kind of stuck. That's the problem. You have to do a lot of research and things like this. I know because I have to go through this one. While with this one, I don't have to. Everything works perfectly. Now, I want a VPN. I just have my VPN here installed. No problem. I want a torrent for my Linux distros, you know, I have it here, no problem. It's easy to install because all I have to do is just simple qubit torrent and that's it. I download it and I install it and it runs pretty amazing. Don't get me wrong, I love it. Now, I, once I open my Plex server here, everything works perfectly here and, you know, I don't have any problems with the Plex. Everything is working, how you can see, I'm watching my movies here. Now, if I go back to my, let's disconnect from here. Now that we're back on the computer, let's try using Plex on this computer here. So I'm going to open Plex here. It's a different computer and stuff like that. And let's go to some movies and whatever movies you want to see, you know, let's click on this one. And literally the movie works perfectly. You know, you just click next. Kaboom, you have the movie. You know, everything works perfectly without any problem. My TV shows work the same. 
every single thing works perfectly and this is the thing what i'm saying because you get a lot of things that you can do normally with another server but it's 10 times easier now another thing that i love about windows is when you make an smb now smb what it does it makes my hard drive from the windows appear visible to others now if i open file for example how you can see if i go to this computer i have my original storage which is 128 gigabytes and then i got four external hard drives just plug and play that's it now if i go back to mac os here how you can see i can actually go to network pcn and then if i click connect normally it will connect automatically but if i click connect i just put my username and the password that i have remember this one how you can see i have my drives d f and g now d f and g is literally the ones that i use set it up so you can see and control from other computers now how do you set it up because i have d f and g this one i don't have to set it up what we have to do is just right click on it go to sharing advanced sharing click share apply okay and how you can see this one is already shared so now if i go back to mac os it won't be able to see it because it needs a reconnection so now i can see it and it's that easy to literally just transfer files between the computer and this one now if you have a more powerful computer then you will be able to play games and everything via remote play but i also said that you know i'm going to show you guys how to control this computer from outside your network so let's go do that now if you put your password again all you have to do is just install tailscale now what tailscale is it's an application that will let you control uh any device that you have installed and i'm pretty sure i already have it installed so this is the application that you need let's see if i have it installed till skill no i don't it's perfect so like this i can show you how it works so how you can see i have download here for windows download you just wait for it to download it's so easy to work with this one is 10 times easier than the unray server and stuff like this so how you can see i agree i click install yes and it's just installing this is how easy it is to actually work with this it's just installing now so then once this one is installed i can control it with my own uh, devices outside of my network doesn't matter what device you have it is a phone a tablet a computer a laptop doesn't matter now how you can see it's fully installed all you have to do now is just open it and how you can see i'm actually now connected so you managed to log in to my account and stuff like this and if you can see here i have an ip address 100 119 now how do you connect from outside of your network is super easy but i have to go to a different view with my phone so now i do apologize for the quality but this is the best way so i can show you guys what i mean so here how you can see i'm in 5g that means i'm not connected to wi-fi so i'm not connected to my home wi-fi and here i'll just make sure that tail scale is connected so i click connect and now how you can see here it's connected all i have to do is just open windows app here and then i just put the ip address which is 100 119 so i can just click add pc connection and here you put the ip address and here you put add user account and your name and the passport that you have for the uh, computer in my scenario i'm connected to tailscale i have 5g so i'm outside of the house and if i click connect here how you can see never ask me for this computer just connect it's configuring my computer and now i'm on the computer so you can control your windows machine from wherever you are in the world depending on how fast your internet connection is on your sim but for me you know if you want to do some quick things and stuff like that works perfectly so yeah this is how you connect your windows computer from outside your house so yeah that's how it is to run windows on a remote desktop using with plex and other things you know again if you have a graphic card you can play games games like roblox for example works perfectly on this computer remote play so depending on what you need in my opinion having a windows PC, mini PC at least as your home server is much easier than having a server made your own server because when I started making my own server it took a lot of time and a lot of problems and a lot of bugs not to say when one of my hard drive was having problems it took a lot of things so I can fix it because the I didn't do correctly the uh, you know the format of the drive and stuff like this so it's a little bit trickier yeah you need a lot of a lot of knowledge 
but with Windows you can run Docker if you want to on Windows so you can still run all your Docker containers or the application from Linux right in Windows you can use WSL for Windows you know you can run Windows uh, Linux I'm sorry and Windows and everything so having a mini PC remote desktop for your basic stuff and then if you want more advanced things you can actually do it with Windows I think it's a pretty pretty nice way of having the new servers right now but this is my opinion let me know what you guys think in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next one